In this tutorial, I'll explain to you how to load Flutter basic configuration files from the Flutter app itself as well as from the server side. Now, a lot of the things starts from actually main.dart file. So this is one thing we have to know. And in main.dart file, you should have your dependencies injected. Like, uh, well, if you use Firebase, of course, you have to initialize your Firebase. And then if you have dependencies like a controller, things like that, for example, if we click on this, we'll see that we have a lot of controllers. Those are getting uh, initialized from over here. So it's a lot of controllers. Now, in the same file, inside this dependencies, we also load some JSON files from our uh, local folder of our device. So we load them and save it in a map. And in that case, after that, we return the map. So yeah, main.dart is the entry point where you load configurations as well as load your dependencies and server-side files. So once again, first in general, you want to load your Firebase uh, configuration if your app connected with Firebase. And then definitely your app will have dependencies. Go ahead and load them. Dependencies in general refers to the controllers. And after that, uh, if you have multilingual app, if your app has multilingual feature, you also want to load them. Now, in general, that part is pretty straightforward. You have to have a local controller or localization controller, and uh, you'll have the default localization controller, which you should load. And uh, you should also have fallback one. Now, about localization, I have a tutorial. You can check that out. And after that, one of the most important thing you should do is uh, so after that, you have to get your splash screen. Now, in general, most of the apps, a splash screen is the initial app. And you also have to make sure that you load all of your routes, regardless you use Go route or uh, Flutter GetX routing system. Uh, either way, you should load them earlier. Now, a lot of the entry point from the U side UI perspective is inside this uh, splash screen. So we do load our uh, splash screen. So this is our get splash route, which actually calls splash screen eventually. Now, you should make your splash screen, I would say, a stateful widget because you could do a lot of fancy stuff, even though if you're going to use a state management system, but it should be uh, Mm, a stateful widget splash screen itself because you will have this uh, you have your uh, init state method and inside this any state actually you can also do a lot of fancy stuff one thing you could do inside this init state you can check internet connection so splash screen in its state is a good option for checking internet connection and after that actually within this init state you can call many different methods uh, it doesn't matter it totally depends on your app architect architecture now one thing i do and i think which is a good practice i try to load this uh, server configuration files and uh, some of the data that i should be getting from server so i load them inside this uh, init state method now if i collapse it you'll see that over here i have a method which is called a route so this is residing inside this init state method. Now route itself calls a splash controller method. And what does it do? And in general, the splash controller should load your uh, config data from the server because your app and server, they're connected. So your server backend is more dynamic than app because you want to change a lot of uh, configuration server or related info in the backend and app should get it updated automatically so it's very important that you load your configuration file in splash screen in its state so if you click on this method we'll see that it gets the configuration data from the server uh, so eventually it makes a get request so we make a get request to the server where we get all the configuration file now this is our server side code over here we do see that we have a configuration method so this is the endpoint that is getting called and as you can see here well i have arrays and i we decode data but eventually 
we are returning a JSON response, so API call returns JSON response, and we do return in an associative array so that in the Flutter front end, we can access them using dot operator. So this is where a lot of your configuration uh, is sent to the front end from back end as a JSON response. So as we are sending JSON response, uh, we need to have better, it's a good practice that we have, a, it's a good practice that we have a model. So over here, actually, that's why I have created this model. So it's called config model. Now this is the model, a class, Dart class, actually, this information has to do with the backend data we saw. So they, are one, they have one-on-one -on -one connection. So this model is nothing fancy. It just have all the fields that I have in in this case, okay? So they are all same. Uh, anyway, one thing that we need to know that we should have from JSON and to JSON because from server we get from JSON. Using from JSON, the information we load and get from the server, later on we can convert them to an object. So as you can see, we create this get request and we check for the status. If the status is correct, then we save it in a config model variable, which is this one. And actually we created a getter for this. So the first variable is this, so this is our getter. Now with this getter, the uh, cool thing is that we can access them later in our app, any kind of configuration that we want to check inside app. So we check the status and return true as well as a config model object. So that should be another most important thing. Uh, yeah, so this is a quick way to understand that uh, how you should configure your app and the steps. So once again, I'll review it very quickly. In your main.dart, if you use Firebase, connect with Firebase, and then you should also load your dependencies and if you do have data from Firebase, you should load them over here as well. Like for example, I'm loading some data from Firebase. And if your app has multi-language feature, then you should also work with this multi-language feature from this entry point. So get the languages data and send it to this My App. Anyway, so after that, you should work with the locale because you have already loaded this multi-language data. And then you should have your splash screen and as well as you should load all the routes. And inside splash screen, you should go ahead and load the configuration data from the server and save it in a variable so that you'd be able to use that later whenever you need. Thank you so much.